right, what's up guys? The Snowman here, and right now I've got my 2020 French Open Men's Draw Preview. As I mentioned in my women's preview, a bit of a temporary filming setup for myself as I am in the process of moving, but uh, I'm excited to break down this Men's Draw right now. Please check out my Women's Draw Preview as well. A lot of fun storylines though, heading into uh, Roland Garros 2020. And a quick look at a quartet of big names who will not be in Paris playing at the French Open, world number four, Roger Federer, uh, recent right knee surgery a few months ago, so he is not at the French, always polarizing Nick Kyrgios. He's still in Australia for COVID and health concerns, so Kyrgios not traveling. Also, Milos Raonic was a late scratch, and no Del Potro, who is uh, injured as well. So let's pull up this uh, French Open men's draw now, and it begins with the world number one, Novak Djokovic, and the pivotal draw question we were all waiting for, which half of the bracket would Dominic Team be on? We have these uh, three favorites in Djokovic, Team and Nadal. Two of them had to be on the same half. Well, it is perfect news for Djokovic and his fans. It is Nadal and Team on the same half. Joker, the biggest winner from today's uh, draw. He's going to absolutely love his chances. So Djokovic now 31-1 and one in 2020, essentially still undefeated. We know that one loss coming uh, via his default at the U.S. Open, letting his anger get the best of him that day. But that hasn't stopped his onslaught on the record books. Uh, last week in Rome, Djokovic picked up his 35th career Masters 1000 title, breaking a tie with Rafa for the most ever. The Serbian has also now been the number one player in the world for 287 weeks in his career. He passed Pete Sampras. Only Roger Federer has held the number one ranking for long longer. Djokovic though likely to pass that one day. He, again, he's at 287 fed, 310 weeks. So let's analyze uh, Djokovic's path within section number one. Maybe Hubert Hurkacz in the third round. Two guys who love to defend. Look for Novak to uh, up the aggression there and then maybe tone it back down in the fourth round if it's Karen Hatchinov, the huge hitting Russian. Garin Hatchinov is interesting because they possess very similar games. Baseline centric, loads of topspin. Djokovic also going to be pleased to see Berrettini at the bottom as he avoids both Tsitsipas and Zverev in his quarter. We could get a third round battle of the three named Spaniards, Roberto Bautista Agu and Pablo Carreño Busta, who's coming off the U.S. Open semifinals. I like the RBA versus Gasquet. First round matchup, one of the nastiest forehands in the game against the legendary one-handed backhand of Gasquet. Expect some tie breaks as well in uh, Berrettini Pospisil. Overall, I'd say uh, Djokovic gets out of this section though pretty easily. Again, uh, he's, he's got to be loving this draw. Looking at section number two now and why do I keep saying it's such an advantage for Djokovic that he's on Medvedev's half and not Dominic teams well simply put the four seed is far less superior on clay Medvedev's career record on hard court 125 with 54 losses that's a 70 percent winning percentage on hard court on clay though Medvedev just 10 and 17 that's 37 percent he lost in Hamburg in the first round to Ugo Umber, 6-4, 6-3 this week. Medvedev's just never going to be uh, that dominant on clay because he hits the ball so flat. Much harder to succeed with that on clay, a surface which favors heavier topspin players. In turn, this is the real wild card section. You've got number five, Tsitsipas, at the bottom, probably the favorite on paper. He's a pretty smooth mover on clay, but Steph, he's not going to like that Filip Krajinovic is maybe lurking in the third round. Last few weeks, Krajinovic has uh, beaten the likes of Dominic Thiem and Felix Oje Aliassime. Speaking of Canadians, Denis Shapovalov is here this week. Uh, Shapo broke into the top 10 for the very first time in his career. He's the second male Canadian ever in the top 10, along with Milos Raonic. And I love uh, Shapo's vibe right now. He's picking and choosing where to take his big cuts of the ball, but playing with more margin, playing within himself, more conservative at times. So uh, he's, you know, he recently won a topsy-turvy three-setter in Rome against Grigor Dimitrov, who's also in his mini section. That could be a fun one. Couple of dangerous floaters then. Sam Query, Kevin Anderson. Look out for Query because his first round opponent, number 13, Andre Rublev, has never been past the first round of Roland Garros. Again, very wide open section. I actually think the 22 seed clay court specialist Dusan Lajevic has a great looking draw. If it's not Tsitsipas, I'm picking another Serbian in Lajevic to get out of this section. All right, so moving along here, we see the aforementioned Dominic team fresh off the US Open title. First men's Grand Slam champion born in the 1990s. Also the first new major winner since Marin Cilic back in 2014. And the Prince of Clay loves the courts in Paris. Roland Garros finalist the last two years. Even took a set off of Rafa last year. And every every season, it seems like we ask, is this the year that Dominic takes down Rafa at the French Open? 
Odds are no, but he is getting closer. Something interesting that team does have an advantage with. He's already won a major this time. So in New York, you can see how nervous team, uh, team Zverev both were in the final, especially in that fifth set tie break. All the pressure to finally break through, uh, get past the big three and win a major. Very tensely played in that final but all that weight should be off Dominic's shoulders. Now he's a Grand Slam champion for the rest of his life. Maybe that's going to help him in France. The terrible news for Dami is that it's a nightmare draw. I mean, this could not have gone any worse for team. For starters, he drew fellow U.S. Open champion Marin Cilic in the opening round. Second round could be the seven-footer Riley Opelka, who can take the racket out of your hand. Third round could be Casper Ruud, who's been on fire semifinals in Rome. And in the round of 16, team could face another overpowering baseline war machine in Stan Wawrinka. I uh, should probably mention that the popcorn matchup of all first round popcorn matches also in this section. That is Wawrinka against Andy Murray. Uh, their tennis career so interconnected, each a three-time major champion. Only guys to break through multiple times at the Grand Slam level in the big three era. So, so much respect. The passion these guys still have is awesome. If you can only watch one match, uh, try to make it Stan versus Andy because that's going to be so much fun. I give Stan uh, a pretty a pretty healthy edge in that game. And then a quick shout out too to Diego Schwartzman. A career week for the Argentine in Rome. First career win against Rafael Nadal. First career Masters 1000 final as well. Did lose to Djokovic in the final, but Schwartzman was just in his zone. I mean, he's a machine on clay. That's how we broke through at Challenger events back in 2013, 14, 15, 16. And at five foot seven, he's never going to blow anyone off the court, but such clean hitting and defense. Uh, he needed a result like that after the heartbreak in the first round of the U.S. Open, losing the two-set lead to Nori. So it's good to see Schwartzman as well. This is a loaded third section. I'm going to say team, but uh, it's going to be a grind. And finally, we see in section number four, the king of clay, Rafa Nadal, and his record 12 Roland Garros titles. Uh, with a title over the next couple of weeks, Nadal will equal Federer's mark of 20 Grand Slam titles. And this will be the first time Nadal ever wins the French Open without winning a tune-up event on clay in the same year. So uh, Nadal, he played Rome last week, but a shock defeat to, uh, to Diego Schwartzman. Rafa chose not to travel to New York for the U.S. Open, so... Good news is he should be well-rested and ready to go. Pretty tough draw, though. Again, Djokovic is going to be the most happy. Rafa sees number six, Varev, on the other side. Young German coming uh, so close in New York to tasting Grand Slam glory. How is Varev going to respond? He says he's just trying to make his parents, his family proud. Very touching post-match words between uh, Zverev and team after that U.S. Open final. But uh, Zverev, he's made multiple French Open quarterfinals before, so he's going to be tough. Kane Shikori lurking uh, for Nadal as well. Potentially Fabio Fanini or Big John Isner in the fourth round for Rafa. Yannick Sinner, David Goffin is an extremely captivating first round encounter. Goffin, the steady veteran. Sinner, the incendiary phenom with uh, Sinner, Berrettini, and Lorenzo Musetti, the 18-year-old who's made a name for himself the last couple of weeks. Future of Italian tennis is so bright. In the end, though, I only see one winner. I do see Rafa coming out of this group. And even though it could be team in the semifinals and then Djokovic in the final, I've got Nadal, the 12-time French Open champ, as the favorite. It's going to be razor-thin margins, though, between Nadal and Djokovic. I think uh, the whole tennis world would be treated to a fantastic final if that were the case. All right, thank you so much for checking out my 2020 men's draw preview. Please check out my French Open women's preview as well. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this draw. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. If you want more tennis content, please subscribe to the Snowman Sports Media. Thanks a lot and cheers.